most of the time when you taking in music, it's background noise, dog. Like you in a bar or everything. So when I'm making this shit, I'm cutting through all the background noise. I be having the TV on. So if you got a group of people with you in the studio and you got the television on and they more focus on the TV just because it's laughing TV boom, that's like, oh shit, to me, that's like, oh, because I came up like in a college, like, like crib, like, you know what I mean? Mad people in the crib, like everyone just doing whatever, making mad noise talking and wouldn't no one engage until what you was doing was actually dope. Hey everyone, this week we welcome New York-based artist and songwriter Quentin Brock to the record process. We discuss the story behind his newest album, My Shadow, which was released on July 8th of this year. The album is a shape-shifting rock record that mixes the soul of analog guitars with cathartic lyrical sensibilities into a sound that I think can be described as both frantically unfamiliar and almost meditative. We get into his rapid fire process for writing surf rock inspired guitar riffs and combining them with his love for the storytelling aspects of hip hop. Quentin's approach to structuring chord progressions and moving quickly from one section to another during the writing and recording process is anything but conventional. And throughout the interview, Quentin shares his insights on trusting his artistic instincts and refusing to overthink ideas as he goes, fearlessly abandoning anything that doesn't immediately strike a visceral chord with him. I really had a blast with this interview. Quentin is so down to earth and we unpack so much about his musical and creative philosophy. I really think you're going to enjoy it. So let's get into it. When the world shut down in 2020, musicians and producers everywhere were forced to re-examine and reimagine their creative process. Without the possibility of in-person studio collaboration, the future of music production was anything but certain. But as the old saying goes, where there's a will, there's a way. And for those professionals who were determined to never compromise on the quality of their audio, the world-class engineers at Audio Movers established that way. By combining the HD streaming of lossless multi-channel audio straight from your DAW with the unique ability to adjust latency and bitrate, Listen To stands as the solution to unlocking global creativity in music production. Its power has been felt on Grammy award-winning albums and on over 85% of all modern Abbey Road studio sessions. So stop letting your physical location dictate the quality of your work and the projects within your reach. For a free trial, just follow the link in our show notes and use the code PROCESS to receive 10% off the first year of your membership. Listen, if you're an artist or musician still struggling to find a better way to distribute and promote your music and you haven't checked out DistroKid yet, then that needs to jump straight to the top of your to-do list. We are proud to have them back with us for another season of the record process, primarily because they, just like us, are committed to empowering and supporting independent artists like you. DistroKid is by far the most affordable service for distributing your music to all digital streaming platforms, and it comes with a bunch of tools to help you elevate your career in a ton of crucial ways. DistroKid not only allows you to spread your music across the streaming ecosystem, regardless of what platform might be top of your focus right now, but it also helps you share your story with labels using their unique upstream tool. You can engage with your fan base using DistroKid's text messaging feature, and they'll even help you create unique lyric videos that can help you promote your music better online. As a record process listener, you can get 30% off of your first year's membership just by heading to the show notes and signing up using our affiliate link there. And remember, we always love hearing what you're working on and how tools like DistroKid are helping you create some incredible moments for your fan base. So please don't hesitate to share them with us. And now here's our interview. Quentin Brock, welcome to the record process. I'd ask how you're doing, but I feel like I already know because we've been chatting for a little bit. I get the sense that you're doing pretty good and you're pretty charged up about this album and life in general. Is that true, dude? I'm hyped, man. Um, This is like my magnum opus. I believe that, you know what I mean? I really have written, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, one of the best rock albums of all time. My Shadow Speaks not to me, but to my people. It's a record that that is near and dear to my heart. It's about love, loss, friendship, self-realization, growth. Um, it's it's everything that I've ever wanted to to make in the time that I made it. 
I've just learned so much about myself and I'm really, really excited for the world to be able to see me as I am and, and the person that I am and the person I'm growing and the person I want to be. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm hyped up album mode, but the beautiful thing about it is, is really just the beginning, man. My next EP is already done. The next, e- the next joint's completely done. Album artwork, sealed, sealed, cut. You already know. We out here, no earbuds. You already know how Jamie Coletta gets down. The master plan. Got a mastermind in the back. You know what I mean? In the driver's seat. Jamie's in the driver's seat. You feel me? We got we got a mastermind over there. So I'm just excited for everything we are going on. There are so many layers in there that we are going to peel the hell back right now in the next hour. Dude. First of all, you mentioned Jamie, who anybody that's listened to the show knows from season two was a shining light in terms of telling everybody how uh, how that kind of behind the scenes rollout goes and how it, it kind of um, kind of comes together real nice when you have something and an artist, uh, not unlike yourself, dude, that, um, that knows themselves, you know, and knows what their message is. So we love that she is working with you and we got to also just give her a shout out quick for putting us in touch with you and putting the album on our radar. And it was just this perfect serendipitous timing that came together, uh, in a conversation where, where she mentioned that she thought we would have a good time chatting with you, dude. And I think once again, Jamie was right, dude. So first of all, let's talk. um, So I love the fact that uh, (laughs) um, just it it sounding incredibly prolific already, already have the next one ready to go. But let's talk about my shadow. And let's start from the beginning, man, because there's there's a lot going on that um, this album throws some curveballs. I think the your writing style I want to get into um, and the way you kind of conceptually approach some of those things. There's I, honestly, when I listened to this, I was like, man, this is so cool because I'm enjoying it. But I also just have so many questions from like the the record process mindset um, that I got to get out there. So let's just start with a quick background on like the who, what, where, uh, and we'll get into the why. You touched on a little bit of that, but like, where'd you do this record? Where'd you cut it? Where'd you write it? And who'd you do it with? Give us a little bit of the background and context, dude. Whole record I did in my apartment, in my old apartment. So gotta gotta shout out. I don't know if y'all y'all hip to Lorraine. Um, they put out an incredible record last year, but I lived in basically they they have a house and it's like a studio house, and they got a. Uh, a uh, rehearsal space in the basement and then they got an apartment on the first floor that's also doubles as a studio they do a bunch of stuff and a bunch of instruments everything and then upstairs is also a studio and i live and i moved into there so like um like i would just got a little closet room because i knew they had all the studio all the musicians everyone was coming through the house everybody and their mom came through that crib that's how i met everybody that's how i met Bartiz. everybody was coming through their house because because it, it's they just all the musicians so I got $500 moving to a little closet. I'm in there, pandemic, bang. I had already written a bunch of demos. I had already started writing a bunch of demos. So I wrote out the whole album on all my demos, which is cool because I play all the instruments. So I'll play all the instruments for all the demos. So I did all that in my apartment myself. And then I recorded all the little setup I showed y'all earlier, my little Scarlet, everything. So I did all that. Wow. My roommate, I was living with um with with Dane or Dane's own. This man is a genius, absolute genius. Um, he used to play in a band called Sunny Moon with Anna Wise. Um, he did all that stuff. He's been in all the Kendrick sessions. He's mixed with Ali. He's he's done everything. He also has his own music and he produces a ton of other records. You know, for rappers, Quelle Chris, Snappy Nina. Like the man's been on like ASAP Rocky. Uh, he you know, did uh, 12 East Project, got me up on some ASAP shit too that I was over there. I did 12 East outro with his moms and stuff. It's, shit. it's a cool song and y'all should check it out. Dane is a genius. Um, so I was living with Dane and um, so the pandemic hits, I, I went back up to the town. I'm from Buffalo. You know what I mean? I was like, if I'm if I, if it's the end of the world, I'm gonna be up there with my moms. So I went out there, you know what <laughs> right. I mean? So, so I, right, I, right. I, it, um, and I just finished <laughs> writing everything up there and then i came back down like you know like a couple like um, like six weeks later i think covid was still booming niggas wasn't leaving the house nothing so i uh was just in the crib with dane so we had nothing but time and then so uh i tracked out the entire the entire record 
um, in the house. And then I had all of my bandmates come through individually and just track everything, um, except for my bass and drums. I tracked at the same time in the basement. And then all the guitars I uh, just did with like, you know, I just mic'd um, whatever amps we have or had at, at the time easy 58s and just had everybody take all their first takes you know shout out to my bandmates best dudes in the world yo those are my brothers man um first off griffin smith i've been playing with griffin smith for like almost 10 years now that's that's my guy he's also from buffalo and also Genghis don his music is out of this world he has his own band called the empire and, and they do like all this crazy stuff crazy jazz shit um crazy hip-hop um lo-fi like it's really it's real cool his music is out of this world lots of horns and stuff peter enriquez on guitar most of the crazy solos y'all hear him when it's going crazy crazy brains. that's peter enriquez fastest hands that's who also i did that fender joint with so we did the fender video that's who i had up in there you know what i mean i got the fender in front of me because i actually be playing it you know what i mean i got the joint right here we're gonna talk about that well, uh, before you leave, dude, that uh, that Fender thing, if any, just uh, taking a quick pause because you train of thought, but you mentioned it. So I- I'm just going to bullet point this real quick. That Fender artist check in that you did was the first video that Jamie uh, that Jamie sent me was like, you got to you got to watch this. And dude, I look, we're going to unpack some stuff in there. But if you if you want to get a tape for anybody, it's like obviously you get to know um get to know know you right right now on the show but go check that video out because that is a cool piece of content that i think lets a lot of what's great about you shine through man that's really that's really fun so i wanted i wanted to make sure that people should go check that out for sure oh i appreciate you that's love but okay so you had peter you had peter on the solos which are blazing and are great yeah peter on the solos dhx bass um you know i mean he don't he don't come outside much you know i mean he just plays music chills man he's working man nine to five like you know i mean that's my guy that's who i had and then dane zone um helped me cut everything up he's the hands you know what i mean dane dane really uh you know helped me really you know fine tune everything and get it get it all get it all right and then i played you know samples keyboard all the shit dane played a little keyboard helped me with some chords um, that's my guy. And then, uh, and then it was all done in my crib. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much to like simplify it. That's, that's how the record got done. What was the time frame? Like if you were like, so after everything was written and like you're tracking it, was it like a week, two weeks? I can't work on music for like longer than like a month, bro. Like love that all my sessions and stuff. Like I only the whole album, I spent two weeks writing. I spent maybe if, if we take in total time, like a week and a half. Love that. Doing the whole, the rest of the whole thing. So the whole record took three weeks. I do all my stuff real fast because I just get bored. Yeah. I can't sit there and listen to the same song over and over again. Totally. Or even kind of like, I'm not no engineer. I'm a songwriter. So I can't even do the mixing and sitting there and listening to it over and over again. I go batshit crazy. So like, I'll be like, yo, it sound good. So yeah, I write everything super fast literally everything even when i do sessions with people Mm -hmm. my whole thing is i sit down in the session and i'm like okay cool we just gonna write your next project right now today so i'm going we're gonna leave out of here with seven songs and so the second an idea gets stale so we'll maybe get like 15 ideas Mm -hmm. in like three four hours you know what i mean and i'm cutting whole songs though so i write whole songs okay here's the beat Here's the lyrics. All right, let's track this. Okay, let's do the harmonies. Boom. Okay, done. On to the next one. Yeah. So like, I because I I can't. And then it's better that way though. You know what I mean? Because you figure like that's the way like rap artists do it, mm-hmm. and that's why they be getting so many hits. Future will go into a session and he'll leave out of there with like thirty songs. Yeah. Like yeah. if y'all, if, if people really sitting there taking all this time, blows my mind. But like, I don't necessarily think that it hinders the quality. I think that if anything, you just get more ideas and you're able to push yourself more. It's like I put myself onto like the field. That's why I like to put sports on in the studio and stuff. Be- not because like I like sports like that. I played sports in high school and stuff. Would you play football? And then I did wrestling and then I did lacrosse a little bit too. I was out there with the white boys. <laughs> 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 Would you, uh, in football, what position you play? Uh, running back and, uh, strong safety. Oh, okay. We I mean, love, I love a good safety dude. Yeah. 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 I was turned, man. I was, I was turned to a little captain of the football <laughs> team and shit. You know what I mean? It was cool. And, but my high school team was garbage. <laughs> it was like, like, like we wasn't, wasn't no one going to college, getting the scholarship. Like, it was, you know, in my high school, like the swim team went to states every year. They was, they was 
lit. Like I was like, my like, so it wasn't even like like that. Yeah, man. So that's uh that's pretty much it. I just be writing shit super fast. So I'm just trying to get the whole record done real fast. Oh, I said I like sports on in the studio because just because the athletes on this on the screen, I put whatever sport on. I don't care if it's figure skating. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Whatever. Just because I like it because it's live TV and also the people there are like giving 150%. Yeah. Like they're actually trying. Everyone on the screen is just trying. So like me seeing that, like when I'm working on music or I just have it on, I'm like, oh, these people are actually trying like their hardest at this moment. So I need to actually embody that. And I'm like, okay, let's try our hardest. That's why I'd be hyped when it's like March Madness or like the NBA finals or some shit. That's the only time niggas in the NBA give a fuck. Dude, it's that's incredible, man. So it's like so you're like piping in like real time bits of flow state to like encourage you and inspire you to get into the same mindset in the studio man because that's that's what you're talking about right that's kind of what um what i think you're describing with like eat like bang 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 like get just right out just kind of stream of consciousness you get yourself in that um you know in that tunnel vision mindset and you stay there for as long as possible and that's what i mean talk about figure skating right just like you gotta be 200 percent out there on some ice with like a little, you know, millimeter, you know, between you and some serious injury. Dude, I love that because it's so it's real time. And I, I know this that's actually an interesting thing because um, I know a lot of different producers and some bands it's like some people like to have some sort of visual uh, like inspo up while they're mixing. Right. Or like for Tom and I, like in the studio, like, you know, if if we're cooking with an artist, we'll put we'll put something on or even even to lighten the mood to kind of curate things where it's just like it's a little stuffy. It's too serious. Let's just put like our favorite like bullshit comedy on in the background, you know, like no audio, but because, you know, the dialogue word for word, but it just puts you in a place. Right. But I love that you are. Are, are taking that opportunity to have people that you know are are going and are all in on the craft, even though, it you know, um, that's such a cool, interesting thing. I've never heard that. I mean, I've seen some dudes that are like obsessed with hockey and they're like, I got to watch my team if I'm doing these recalls. But I think what you're talking about is different, man. I'll be having an audio on dog <laughs> in the studio. Hell yeah. I'll be having a TV on like because here's the thing. Most of the time when you taking in music, it's background noise, dog. Like you in a bar or everything. So when I'm making this shit, I'm cutting through all the background noise. I be having the TV on. So if you got a group of people with you in the studio, and you got the television on, and they more focus on the TV just because it's laughing TV boom. That's like, oh shit. To me, that's like, oh, because I came up like in a college, like, like crib, like, you know what I mean? Mad people in the crib, like everyone just doing whatever, making mad noise talking and wouldn't no one engage until what you was doing was actually dope. And then that's how me realized that's then I keep that. So I be and also, but now I think it's fucked me up because now, like in the studio, when I'm in there by myself, the dead silence be killing me. <laughs> like when you like have to pause it, like when I have to like pause it and like I'm working on something or I gotta move something around, the dead silence be killing me. Like, like I just be like, oh, ugh, like, like I just get in my head thinking about what's going on. But like if I have the audio on, I don't know. It just feels more relaxed. I'll be having the TV on and shit. You see it back there. Dude, I love that. It's like uh, it's behind me, though. You feel me? Yeah. 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 It's kind of like throwing like a like a box fan on in the wind, like for some white noise when you get yeah. to sleep or something. Dude. I'm I'm curious. Do you think um, do you think with like a lot of younger artists, um, you know, dudes in their teens, like early 20s, like just starting to find a bit of that like creative itch and, and starting to dig into their craft? Do you find that like a lot of that like constant input stimuli is, is a thing that that artists of the, this like next generation need? Because it's we've been kind of baked, you know, baked into that kind of like 24 um, seven, you know, input, whether it's phone, the whole technology conversation. Right. Or do you think it's it's a different thing um, and that there's still I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that want to sit in their own like um isolation and you know and that to me i i couldn't do the th i couldn't do the thing either right i appreciate it but after like 30 seconds in like a fully treated room there's a madness that starts to creep in that's not a productive one <laughs> y'all know who jd beck is y'all heard of jd jd beck and domi they just signed with anderson pack oh yeah on, yeah on yeah okay. label, but they're they're tight they're tight they're super tight i know them real well jd's a homie of mine 
And he started playing drums for my brother when he was only 15 years old. Oh, hell yeah. And so he's in, um, like 15 years old playing drums. Kids are prodigy, but you know what I mean? I've known him for years. It's just like my bro. It's me, JD, John back. We have John finna play MoMA PS1, right? Like, um, so it's packed out MoMA PS1. We backstage at MoMA PS1, right? And you know what I mean, John. Um, if, if y'all hit to my to, to my brother, probably anybody who's tapping in with me on this pod and, and press and play on this because they listening to me is tapped in with my brother. So um, John Bat, you know what I mean. He's a real you know elusive figure. Like you know what I mean. He be he be laughing, joking, chilling backstage, doing his thing, but he not really trying to do too much. Like you know what I mean, or even trying to look at nothing, take in nothing. He might listen to the music, but he not really trying to take in nothing. Like you know what I mean, like do anything extra. Meanwhile, this man, JD, just sitting there, he on his phone looking at Instagram, just scrolling, like looking at TikTok videos, looking at all these videos in there, giggling to himself, everything. And I'm telling you, like, we are like getting ready to go on the stage, blah, 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 right? And I'm like, oh, okay, hi, that's whatever, whatever, right? Now we sitting there, now we all literally at Moan PS1, you sitting on the stage, right? And then all whole crowd, everyone right there while you setting up, it's nothing like special, like everyone standing right there. JD sitting on a drum set, sitting there scrolling, looking at it. And he looked up at me. He's like, this is how I get ready for shows. <laughs> and I said, what? And I was like, at the time, he was like 15. I was like, bro, this is how you get in the zone for show? I was like, motherfucker, you don't put your fucking phone away? <laughs> get, your, get your mind right? But like, it just goes to go to say like, yo, he just needed to stimulate. He just needed his mind to be, because he played the drums like, like real crazy. So it's like, it, it makes sense in my mind that, seeing all them videos, seeing all that shit going that fast, you know what I mean? Like, it's funny, but like, I mean, that was like a couple of years ago and he could have just been being dumb as hell because the kid just do also just be fucking with motherfuckers like all the time. He thinks shit is funny. We'll check back in when he's like 60, see if he's still scrolling pre-show. Yeah, get him on the pod, get him on the pod and then see what he says, man. The kid's funny. Yo, honestly, so that's honestly kind of perfect, right? Um, Because I think there's probably something there too where it's almost like, I, I, I want wonder what your take is on this and all of it. It's almost like uh, there's so much happening upstairs, right, that you need something to distract that top layer of your brain so that you don't go in and like and overthink it. So you can just kind of let that muscle memory and autopilot that's running in the background underneath just do its thing. Right. Because if you if you're too focused, right. Or there's, you know, there's nothing else to take away that kind of top layer. You'll that, that shit will creep into the good stuff to that flow state beneath. So in a way, I'm sure he, he probably was right. And that was, that was super astute for a 15 year old kid to be like, nah, this is what I need to do right up until I'm going. I just need to not think about it and then just do it. And that probably allows him to do it where if he sat <laughs> staring at a wall for a half an hour, he work himself up to be like, there's no way I can do this, you know? Um, and I think, and that's probably true, dude. There's a, there's a lot. I mean, you look at, you know, even down to athletes, Olympians, right. That like are, are listening to whatever. And everybody's like, Oh, it gets them hyped up. It gets them whatever. It's like, nah, it's something that they can focus on. That's not the intent tense pressure of the moment around them or the expectations. If you're in the studio of like, we got like six more hours and I got to finish this record right now. You know, it's like, if you're, if you're sitting there, that's going to, that's going to strangle you. Right. But if you got some sports in the background and it's, there's just this general kind of, you know, like white noise vibe around and, and some things to focus on. Maybe that's what it, maybe that's what it takes, dude. I think you're, I think you're illuminating a lot of shit for our audience right now. Man, I play, I play shaky knees and I'm doing, and shaky knees and you know i'm still i'm still on the way up but here's the way i look at shit so you either on the way up or you on the way out baby so i'm on the way up right now you feel me so i'm doing shaky knees with no tm i don't got no tour manager nothing i'm tming myself i'm doing everything myself i'm checking in i'm going in dealing with artist services dealing with everybody running around back and forth doing the whole festival and on and now it's like my set time as well so now it's crazy to go from business mode to try and flip that switch and go into artist mode and I actually thought back to that moment with JD when he was just scrolling on his phone. And it's funny that you said that um, about just like leaving, leaving that moment, just being able to to leave yourself. I feel like for my shows, because my shits be hype. You feel me? Like I'm walking out. Like my last show, I walk out. I look at the crowd because I'm still opening. You feel me? So I'm opening up for Delta Sleep, and I'm I'm over there, and I'm just like you know Delta Sleep fan base. You know, oh, yeah, shout yeah. out to them. Nice, dope, 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 dope dudes, but. You know what I mean? Cool, funny as hell. They they sound engineers, hilarious. Uh, that man had me dying. But I walk out 
to their fans. I'm just like, okay, well, I'm gonna walk back. And when I come back out, I need everybody out here to pretend that I'm your favorite artist. So let's do this again. So I walk out and then I walk back out and then they all go, ah, and they all start yelling. But I was just like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just kind of like that thing. But, but right before I do that, man, I take a, I take a, I take a breath, man. It's just, as long as I get my one second to breathe, my one second to myself, just close my eyes and be like, okay, cool. I'm here. I can flip the switch. You know what I mean? And I feel that, you know what I mean? So I know exactly what, and for everybody to flip that switch, it takes something different to put yourself in that space. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, I do appreciate the athletes and, and I can appreciate, you know, a young JD finding, finding what works for him and who knows what, what it is. You know what I mean? At this moment, I feel like those things change and evolve with every single show that you play because you get more experience. But for me, it's just, I just need to be able to close my eyes, take my breath, boom the switch is flipped and then it's somebody i become someone different man as if something comes over me it's, it's just a different different person you see i don't know you can do anything you want man you feel invincible if you're listening to this right now i want you to do the same thing do what quentin just told you to do and take a second and breathe and and unpack that and, and take that in because that's real man and that and tom and i tom we've talked about this even like um so tom does a, t- a ton of like studio design work like he's uh, an incredible uh acoustician among Amongst so many other things, right? So we start to talk about it's like everybody is concerned with, uh, you know, the gear, the aesthetic, um, the gear and the sound of a studio, right? But there's something about the aesthetic and that the overall space itself that I think on a commercial level can almost kind of trigger what, what we're talking about right now when you step in. It elevates you, but also keeps you in a comfortable thing where it's like, maybe, maybe you need some lights going. Maybe you need a, you know, some things to play with, dude. It's like, why does every commercial studio have like that lounge with like all the game consoles, a TV and some, you know, some shit. It's like, it's because if you just have nothing to do to distance yourself from the work at hand, you're going to be way too absorbed in it. And it's, it's not going to breed that continued creativity, man. And I, and I love that. And, um, And I also on that same note, because, you know, you're talking about what is something that is so, so common and is almost like Tom, right? Part of the reason that we started a show like this talking about the process is because there's some things that um, that cross over and um, and are are kind of universal, even though music has moved um, with technology to the point where you can make an incredible record. You can write it and track most of it from your bedroom with a two track right in like a in a familiar space. And I almost wonder sometimes, you know, if that doesn't go to show the same kind of thing and, and that comfort, a space where you can you can be in it. You don't have to think too much about like the journey, booking the time, going to the studio, walking into an unfamiliar environment, right? Maybe some people, what they need is to just, I got an idea. I need it to be right there, you know, so I can just put it down. So they don't overthink it and don't lose it and don't think themselves out of a lot of that shit. Right. You know, I, I wonder if I, and, and because you work that way and you mentioned that, I think you can feel that on the record. You can feel the immediacy of some of these ideas, you know, and I think that's something that you, you maybe do lose if it gets filtered and, and distilled through much, through, through too many hands, too much time. Right. But I just wanted to to make a note of that, too, man, because uh, so many people that we're talking to and especially the pandemic the last couple of years, right, gave the industry a violent shift into like working out of your home um, and being creative. And I think you're going to see a lot of that, um, you know, that period start to unfold in the next five, 10 years where, um, you know, not just people doing it on their laptop, but how the music sounds and how it comes out, because it's not put through this like year long process of like, okay, now we got to hit this checkpoint. We got to do it exactly this. We got to round that corner. Right. And I, and I kind of love that. I think you see a lot of that in music, man, but I, I this record specifically, I felt like th- there was that immediacy to it. Taking a minute here to shout out our good friends at Sheet Happens Publishing. Back with us again for season three. They are a company that works directly with artists to create accurate and immersive tab books, vinyl, and other merch that allows fans to get one step closer to perfecting the soundtrack of their lives. As many of you may know, I had the pleasure of working side by side with them to put together a book for my band, The Wonder Years. And believe me, they are incredibly thorough and always dedicated to artist approved accuracy in every one of their books. 
Every tab book comes with the accompanying guitar profiles, which allow you to jump right into playing along with all of your favorite tracks. So all you need to do is head over to SheetHappensPublishing.com to check out everything they have to offer and be sure to enter the code TRP15 at checkout for 15% off your first purchase. Or you can find the link in our show notes. And again, that's promo code TRP15. Real fast, the, I, I just want to make one comment that like I saw recently in a show. And Quentin, by any chance, do you watch Barry on HBO? I haven't seen the new season, but I've seen the first two. No spoiler. But there's a scene where Barry's girlfriend, I forget her name, she does this thing where she's like walking through being like director person and then like flips a switch and she's like in this super intense acting scene and it's that like they show that uh, that second that you were talking about that you need they show that like transformation and it's so cool so when you when you do watch the second season or the the newest season make sure like think about that scene and it's like the perfect actualization of what you were just describing it's so cool word i'm I'm gonna check that out i'm gonna check that out where are y'all located? So I, I'm down in Philly. And I am in Atlanta as of last year. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I still go back. I still hop back and forth between Philly and Atlanta. I was in Philly my whole life. But yeah, so I, I'm I'm down just outside Atlanta. Okay, cool. When, when I play Philly, I'm going to get y'all in. We got to get y'all over to a show, man. We're going to get everything popping. It's going to go crazy. It's going to be it's going to be great. But uh, yeah, like like when I was listening to the record, there's that immediacy. There's that like freshness, if you will. It felt top of mind. I feel like you can you can feel the uh, when something's just like overcooked. When you're like, yeah. oh, every note is just like exactly where it should be, and then there's no life. You don't hear yeah. that heartbeat. That's not to say there's like any moments that like uh, like everything sounds exactly how it should be. I, I don't yeah. want that to come across. But yeah, it, that felt true from the first like five seconds. Like it, you can just get you, you can just get that. I, I don't want to like jump too far. So case stop me. But like I, I did want to talk about the sequencing that you had. OK, yeah, for sure. Love the interludes. I'm going to call them interludes. Talk to us about that, because the, that's like very unique and very interesting in regards to like where like you listen to the first song yeah the first two songs and like when you hear the first interlude after the first couple of songs it felt refreshing it was like a break that i don't normally get in a record that was really cool so where like where's that stem from what's the what's the what's the feeling and like again this is a, it's a very my project is a very very focused one it's my exploration of uh, the passing of my best friend and college roommate. So all the interludes in the record are all taken um, during the time of his passing and on the trip to his funeral. The record, the so the first interlude that you hear at the end of My Shadow is a voicemail that two of my friends left me because, you know, after he, after he died, I, I just stopped talking to people. I went I, 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 I went, you know, what I mean, I, it, it was a dark time for me. I just I didn't I, I, I kind of turned my back. And at that same time, the same week that he died, um, my dog died and my girlfriend uh, dumped me and, and moved out. So um, it was like a really it was a, it was a it was a it was a time for me, man. That's why I say I, I've, I've been caught up before. I, I know I know how it feels to be caught up. So, yeah, that first one's a, a voicemail at the, at the end of the very first song where you've been at kill. You know what I mean? I mean, where you been? You know what I mean? That's my voice. Um, so, you know what I mean? They, was, they just they it just hit me. And then Lay With You, I guess, is the next interlude. That is a uh, is a iPhone recording that I had a voice memo of me singing to my ex-girlfriend before she uh, broke up with me. And then, uh, and then it's Touch. And then Genuinely Happy is a conversation we had, me and my friends had, um, during the trip to my... Uh, uh, Garfield's funeral, my friend's funeral. After that, the next interlude, Use What You Got, I love. It's actually, you know, shouts out to Michi Correct. Uh, my friend Jessica was just kind of singing and it was it was a good time in my apartment. She was up and she went to school with this girl named Michi Correct who sang this song 
called Market. And I had never heard the song. I didn't know. And we were just kind of freestyling. And I was recording everybody. And she started singing Michi's song. And I actually, I had never thought of it, whatever. And I just threw it on on my record because it was just kind of the same time period. Yeah. And it was just a, a, a good time. And I really loved the words of the song. I, I love I love what she was saying. I loved everything. You know what I mean? Like every everything that she was saying, um, it, it just made so much sense. And it just spoke to me and to like what was going on. And then uh, just came he's like, yo, that's Michi's songs. And I had Michi and I was like, yo, do you care if I use this? This is cool. Like, I didn't even know X, Y, Z. She was like, yeah, oh my God. Yes, of course. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to Michi. So use what you got. Um, that's like the insider tip on, on use what you got um, on that interlude. And then um, the absolute is, all right, some clout shit for the pod. You know what I mean? Because now we deep in the pod. If you this deep in the pod, you deep in the pod. <laughs> the absolute, I was over. You ready for some clout shit? I was hanging out at uh, Navy Blue's house with Pink Sifu, Akai Solo, Loji, who's a rapper from Philly. Loji is out of this world. Who else? Ted Kamal was there. Pink Sifu was there. You know, what I mean, we we was all we was all up in there chilling. And so I recorded um, Akai Solo, and we was all just really talking about some about some real life shit. You know what I mean? And it, it just. And what they were saying, you know, resonated with me and I knew it would resonate that conversation would resonate so much further with with the world. It was something that the world needed to hear what they had to say that I think that speaks to a lot of artists and people who are chasing things, because the thing is that, you know, we can we can chase this vision of the absolute of greatness of of what is it. And I started this pod off by saying I've written the greatest record of, of all time. I've written the greatest rock album of the century of, of the 2000s of the 2020s why do i say that why is that why because i can only hear my own thoughts so to me that is the greatest album why not why 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 wouldn't it be music is that of opinion no one will hear anything in a hundred years all the music will be forgotten and lost think about all of the music that of the of the 18th century that we listen to that even resonates with anyone today it's not none of it if we're being real, you learn that shit in orchestra class when you learn how to play the fucking viola and then you throw that shit in the garbage when you want to learn how to play the guitar because you heard the Ramones. Fuck the Ramones, but you hear what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's like it's like this idea of chasing of chasing the crown. And I think that that goes right well, so well with use what you got, because it's like you use what you have to chase the crown. You know what I mean? But what is the crown and what is the absolute to you? What is what what? What is this, the, the title of the greatest? You know what I mean? What does it mean to truly be the greatest and have the greatest? It's whatever you want it to be. Totally. Yeah. Preach, dude. Preach. That brings a question to mind. You're talking. What you're talking about right there is a serious mindset shift, right? And I think a really, really important one for any artists that are trying to evolve and trying to do the come up thing, right? So because it's a lot of times, uh, and I'm sure we like we all know this and all share this to varying degrees. It's those negative thoughts that creep in that prevent you from doing something, right? It's it's exactly those that you're fighting back when you try to like surge ahead and not let them in in a session. And because those are the things that creep in, it's that little bit of self-doubt, right, which I think sometimes is healthy because it pushes you to evolve and you got to push past it, you know, and you learn a lot about yourself when you push past it. Do you think you um, do you think you have any idea when that kind of that mindset shift started to happen for you as an artist when you're like, hey, it's all subjective and I can believe I can be, you know, my greatest advocate too, without and 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 know that that's okay, and 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 it becomes a, a confidence thing where you choose what you can listen, what you listen to, and what noise you tune out. You know, do you do you have a sense of like when you started to to see that and feel that shift in yourself? I can say that like musically, as a musician and a songwriter and a performer, I feel like my real talent is performance. Like I'm I'm like this show is is my superpower. That's where I turn up at, and the sh- and my album and my record as live and as great as it is, is a catalyst to me for to to be able to perform this thing live and to bring this experience because that's the holistic experience. I feel like that confidence, I guess, I used to spend a lot of time, you know what I mean? Like my big brother was big brother. Like my, my older brother is John Bapp, who's like the greatest musician of all time. Like that nigga is the GOAT. Like he got songs with Sa Ra and shit. Like, like yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Songs with like Shafiq Hussein and stuff. Shafiq Hussein don't make music with no yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like he, he got songs with Shafiq Hussein and stuff like like that's crazy 
And like everyone holds him in that high of a regard as a musician. And he is that good. Like he has like, he's like playing drums with Daru Jones and stuff like that. My brother is dope. His, I mean, his, his girl is Anna Wise. She won two Grammys with Kendrick. Like, yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so that's my sister. Like, you know what I mean? Like they are the greatest. Her voice, she has the voice, Anna has the voice of an angel. Like, you know what I mean? They're, they're like, they're the greatest. You know what I mean? So I can't, I feel like, for me, I spent a lot of time, you know, even when I was in the Get Money Squad and me and John were really going hard doing all that and doing all that, like, together. And he was putting out his records. I spent a lot of time, like, you know, in his shadow. You know what I mean? And I, as just the little brother. And being little bro, you know what I mean, allowed me to just grow on my own, you know, to to have that time. And so I think when John moved away and, and then I moved to New York and then I you know, I'm living in this studio and it's just kind of just like, if I want to do music, I have to just do it literally all for myself. Like I, like no one's going to make nothing for me. No one's going to make nothing with me. Don't no want to hear nothing. Don't no one want to jam with me. Don't like, I don't got no band, like nothing. I just need to make everything. So I feel like that was really the shift. Yeah, man. The all, the, the kind of all in, you know, it's, it's not only a, you know, a physical state, but it's, it's that mindset, you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm just doing it, you know, meeting every day with me, like, I don't know. It's like, I'm going to wake up and do whatever the job is today of being that artist and, and, and evolving. Uh, and I love that dude. I, I mean, I think that's, that's kind of everything, right. Is like you, it's a choice, you know, it's like a lot of people talk about what, you know, what they have the power to do and how they, they struggle to get heard and be heard. But I, I think ultimately it's like, I'm going to make this music and figure out my path. I mean, that's what you've done. Right. And sure. You had, some people around you, we talk about community and collaboration and, and setting the tone. And, you know, you had, I mean, clearly, a, you know, an incredible wealth of people in your friend, friendship network, your family that you learn from, that you grow from, and that you also give that energy back to. And I think that's an important thing that, uh, that Tom and I always try to bring out whenever we can with this show. Um, because that's that's kind of everything, too, is like creatives are it's this back and forth dance of like, you know, you cheering on somebody that gets a win and knowing that, like, regardless of whether or not they're going to cheer you on right now, you you know what I mean? It's all about that because we're all just trying to win and do that breakthrough and, and get get what we're doing out there and be um, authentic to ourselves. So that's a great testament to that, man, where you're just like, this is it. I moved here and now I got to make all of it happen. How am I going to do that? You know, instead of asking the question, can I do this? It's let me go figure out how. Right. Um, and, and just deciding that I, I love that, dude. So on the topic of, you know, collaboration, right? Right. And working with other artists, you mentioned shaky knees and a little birdie named Jamie uh, mentioned that you met some interesting people there that led to a collaboration uh, track uh, on this album that I've heard. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? If you, oh, yeah. If you know yeah, what I'm talking yeah. about, dude, because that is I think that is um, an incredible story. I'd love you to share with everybody because it just it walks and talks of like, you never know what's around the next corner. Right. And, and I think music and festivals and the live performance end of everything can lead to something really interesting when you least expect it. So yeah, dude, hit our audience with that. Oh yeah, man. Um, yeah. Shout out to Portugal, the man, they're dope as hell. Um, yo, John is cool, man. The man got his finger on the pulse, uh, everything with, with the music and, uh, he hit me up. I got put on a pigeons and planes list. And then he hit me up after the pigeons and planes list. And then after that, I yeah, we was down on shaky knees. And I was down on shaky knees, bro. I was running around. I met everybody on shaky knees. Cause I was like, look, I don't give a fuck. I got the VIP shit. And you know, what I mean, me and my me and my boys, you know, what I mean, we from the town. Like I have my boy Elijah, you know, we from Buffalo. Like, you feel me? So like we don't get to meet all the celebrities, all the all the crazy motherfuckers, all the shit. So I'm like, I got the VIP artist pass. So you trying to tell me y'all can't no one tell me nothing, and I can call and get the go kart for myself. Oh, <laughs> yo, are you shitting me? <laughs> yo, me and the go kart motherfucker, we was cool as hell. I'm smoking weed with him. That shit was going crazy in Atlanta, ATL. That shit was crazy. So I met everybody in a mom's literally phoebe bridgers i'm out there you know what i mean we flicked up with phoebe 
Um, I'm flicked up with uh with with I'm at Julian Casablancas for the strokes. I got his number. Jules cool as fuck. I got everybody number, bro. I'm I'm out there running around. I'm at everybody. That shit was cool. I'm out there meeting the kid from Stranger Things. He playing his band, and it was cool as hell. That's my man's too, Finn. That's my guy. But yeah, so then I'm running around. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm meeting everybody. So I text, I hit him on the DM. I'm just like, yo, y'all back here? And then there was like, yeah, come over by the food truck. And then so I ran over to the food truck and we flicked up, got the whole picture, um, did the whole nine. And then after that, he was just real cool with me. I got his number and we just like got real, real, real in tune. John is, is out of this world, man. Um, incredible musician too. The man is a genius. He texts me and was just like, Yo, let me know if you need anything for your album. He literally just texted me and asked me. He was like, let me know if you need anything for your album. And I was like, what? Dope. And then so I just hit him right back and I just sent him uh the song. I sent him the whole the whole joint with the uh with the verse and uh the whole song written, everything. And then he um and I just worked with him on the hook. So me and him worked together on the hook and um and John is 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 dope as fuck. And then yeah, man. So that's one of my favorite songs ever. So it's it's so dope to be able to, you know, I mean, work with them. And I think, you know, Portugal the Man's story is, you know, similar to my own and in that small town feel. You know what I mean? They coming out from Alaska. I'm coming from Buffalo. We both from the snow. You know what I mean? The, the world, the worlds <laughs> are, are real, are real similar. Um, and then also, you know, coming coming out of that place where, you know what I mean, artists don't come from. Artists don't come from Buffalo. You know what I mean? Artists don't come from Alaska, like artists, you know what I mean? Artists don't come to come see Buffalo. They they be stepping over Buffalo. They go to Toronto or they go to New York City or they go to Pittsburgh. Every once in a while we get the big people. When Jay-Z and Beyonce come, everybody come, you would think it was it was it was the second coming. People come in their Sunday best. They dressing like crazy. <laughs> it was it's fashion week. It's crazy in the town. It shuts down. So that's what I'm trying to say, like, like you know, we don't win the Super Bowl. We don't, we don't get all these things. We just now, my seat's just now heating up. And, um, you know what I mean? Just to take a second to even speak on that, you know what I mean? You know, RIP to, to the lost souls uh, from the terrorist attack that took place in my city um, over, over the past week. Um, the damage is, is still, and I would be remiss if I didn't, if I didn't speak on that at this moment. And um, yeah, there's just a lot, a lot going on. And I believe that, you know, people need to really pay attention to that even more and don't let this fade to black because just as fast that it was my town, um, it can be literally anywhere in anybody's town. And there's a real issue with white supremacy here in America. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, that was uh, it, it, it. There's almost not words with, for that to describe the horror and the fact that it, it's 2022 and and that's that's still um, may, maybe more so than ever just a. a a blatant uh, issue in, um, you know, on the front page and yet everybody still seems to be floundering with, you know, what to do. It's like, you gotta, it's, it, it should not fade. And I, and I, I couldn't agree more with you. And yeah, to have that, you know, I mean, you are exactly what you said, dude, you're embodying the fact that that is your city, right. And we're seeing it happen in everybody's city. And so it's only, a, you know, in that sense, a matter of time before it is everybody else's city, you know, like, um, so it's, a, it's one of many, unfortunate wake up calls, you know, and that you, that you get to experience firsthand how it affects. And what we hope is that, uh, you know, people in artists such as yourself that have a voice that are putting out real, real authentic music and trying to connect some dots for people, you know, put that there, you know, and, and let that sit there. And hopefully people do ruminate on it. Oh, yeah. Dude, the connection that you're talking about with them from the small towns, dude, is yeah. it is beautiful. And I and I, I love that 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 came together because that's that's a really cool part of the process that makes a record like this special, you know? Yeah, man. I appreciate literally everything that, that you have to say and even giving me this platform to even say that right now is, 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 is true love, man. And, and I appreciate y'all for sure. But for sure, man, back to PTM, man, because that's my brothers and they show my love. But the song itself is, you know what I mean? Called Wannabe, man. It's about being a small town kid, man. It's about it's about it's about being able to to see bigger things and maybe being having to leave where you're from and and having to let go of something to to get something new. In order to get something you've never had, you got to do something you've never done. And and to have my first you know huge feature, you know what I mean, to be with something, to be to be with a band 
of that caliber that has such a similar story as well have the song be about this and have the meaning in there is it's just it's just everything i could have ever dreamed of you know what i mean T- only two features on the record are pink seafood and portugal the man yeah. unreal dude that sets a tone that sets a real tone and shows i think so much about you and and the choices and the th- and the things that you're you know letting in and and putting forward to the fold in what you choose, you know, to sing about, write about, and who uh, I've always said this, it's like the, the music that you choose to let inspire you and the people you choose to make it with speak sometimes just as loud as, as the music itself. And I, I, that's why I wanted to um, bring those two things to light, not only because the song's incredible, but because I think that's, you know, for a lot of people would be like, you know, an unusual pairing, but it really makes so much sense when you get behind it and find out that there's all that kind of commonality and and all that love um, underneath. So the last thing I think I want to kind of touch on and dive into, because you 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 just said it yourself, you got to kind of let go sometimes uh, of certain things Maybe they might be, you know, constructs that you have deep inside yourself or the way you see yourself or the attachment to, you know, um, to certain physical or, um, you know, emotional uh, baggage that you have in in your life. And everybody has it. We all have it. Right. Um, Now, talk about from a songwriting standpoint. Right. There's uh, I touched on this and we mentioned this, you know, at the beginning in order to stand out. Right. I, I think there's a. In marketing, there's kind of uh, there's a there's a term called pattern interruption, right? And I think what that kind of gets on when it comes to um, you know having an artist that really starts to understand what they are and what they're you know what they're looking to steer into, it, it's about finding those choices where they want to divert from what came before them, and those choices where they you know take the influence of the stuff that they love and put their own spin on it that makes it uniquely them. And one of the first things that struck me, man, there's no way we can't talk about this because it's it also kind of ties back into something that you said in that uh, artist check-in with Fender that you did, which once again, what check that out and watch that and you will get an incredible essence uh, of Quentin in, in, um, in the way I think maybe you think. But I'd love you to talk more on when it comes to writing and specifically uh, guitar-based music, the progressions that you lean into, man, they challenge people, right? And they are atypical. And and I want I wonder what your thought process is behind that in terms of embracing the unexpected and and choosing those moments. And if there are things that just naturally come right to you, or if you know you will go back on a progression and say, nah, that feels too comfortable. I want to you know I want to inject something in the middle to make people pause and, and, and poke their heads up. What? How do you approach all that? Um. All right. So like. For real, like I really write all my songs just with shapes on the guitar. I don't write it with like theory and stuff for a couple reasons. Well, I think that the first reason being that not that I reject theory or I don't find value in it. And I think that I, as I learn more theory, I'm actually getting really excited because I'm just learning more patterns because it's just all patterns. Like, you know what I mean? And as you learn the scales and stuff, it's just all patterns. So as I, as I, as I learn, but guitar is one of those things that you're constantly learning. It's, you're never done. Like it's a, it's a lifelong journey thing, which is a lot of fun for me. But, um, I write all my songs with shape. So like, I just move the guitar up, up and down the neck and then I see the shape and then that's, that's how I write it. So most of the time, even if the chords, some of the chords won't make sense, like, because but if you're playing it it makes sense like and only if you're playing it which is which be killing my families because like when i teach them the songs and stuff like that i'll be teaching them the shape of the song but that's why i rock with peter because he'd be like nah bro this makes sense and peter's so good at guitar he's like like the pinnacle of guitar and like to me Peter's the pinnacle of guitar. Like this man knows literally everything about the guitar. And also griffin also knows literally everything about the guitar and if y'all have instruments you both of y'all, Tom, Casey, America, the world. If y'all have instruments, hit up my boy Griffin. He's the best guitar tech in the world. Mm. He will fix everything, hook everything up. I'll pass him his contact to y'all off, 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 off camera or whatever. But I'm saying everyone else look up my shit and then you can get in contact with Griffin if you need your guitar. He also builds custom guitars, does everything. Like this man is a wizard. Um, and he plays a bunch of solos on the record too. He played the solo on my shadow. Play a couple other solos. That's my guy. We will link to your dude in the show notes. 
How's that? We'll get we'll we'll get the contact for it because I oh, love yeah. that, dude. You see, it's all that's how the referral game is how the world works, and especially in this circle. So I love that. You know, like this is the this is the place to be. Like these are the shoulders that I stand on. These are the people that support me. So hell yeah. Oh, he set up he set up my joint. He set up he set up the Telecaster. You know what I mean? Um, he set up all my guitars. He set up everything. So we're we're turned up on this side. But yeah, fam, it's 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 a process. It's 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 a lot of fun though, and and just kind of like diving in and just kind of seeing seeing kind of what what makes the most sense every single time. You know, are, are there any times where um are there, or maybe any specific instances on the record where you went back and said oh, this is too easy or it feels too good or maybe the opposite? You know, maybe it's like hey, this is maybe a little jarring. Let's let's split the difference and, and find a different chord for it that you can think of, or was all of it just kind of? Oh, I think like again, like I think it kind of dives back into the process that I spoke on earlier. Because here's the thing, when I tell you I write everything so fast, I do the same thing for myself. You know what I mean? One day, you know what I mean? We're going to pop back in on the pod. I'm going to have a computer set up. I'll be able to show you all all the files. I just, I'll show you, like, some of the files just be like a single chord. And the second I think it's trash, I move on to a whole new idea. So all the songs are written at one time. I don't, I don't go back. I'm only ever moving forward. So, like, there's, there's... Like, even when I teach it to my band, I'm getting their first takes. That's why stuff sounds out of place. They're such high level musicians and they're so heady that like, if like I were to, and the songs are so simple that if I were to give them the songs, even for like a week or two weeks for them to practice, or we had a rehearsal or something like that, it's going to become too technical and too on point. And it's going to lose the feeling. I give them the songs a couple hours before I'm like, yo, listen to this. Here's the chart. Go check it out. Boom, 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 boom. And honestly, when I say here's the chart, they write their own charts because I'll be showing them the shape of the song. So they'd be writing their own charts. And then they like, all right, yo, just want me to play like this? Yep. And then if anything don't make sense, I'll just move it in the computer and I'll just make it a little bit cleaner. And then that's the only time. But most of the time you're just hearing it, just letting it play. That's why it has a live essence because they're so they're so tight, right? And but the songs are so simple and they're written so fast. So then it gives it that same feeling on the on the proper recording than you get on the demo because the demos are just all feeling. Like so as long as you could just feel it, that's it. As long as the chords make sense, you know what I mean? Oh, this song sounds and feels sad. This song is bright and feels happy. And the chords make sense. Boom, 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 boom. I just write the song. I'm saying when I'm saying I write the song, bro, I'm saying like I write the song, like the lyrics, I'm doing like the harmonies, everything at one time. And then when I go to the studio to do the second time, I'm just I'm I'm only in there for like a couple hours because I grew up in Buffalo where like I didn't really have studios or nothing like that. So when I got to get to a studio, I was paying for the time and I would only I would have to go in there with such a thick plan and everything would have to be done. So now I just do that now. It's just easier for me. Yeah, I get uncomfortable if I'm just sitting there like trying to figure shit out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Quentin, you said something, man, that uh, I think is the perfect way to put a pen, pin in this whole hour. You're always moving forward. You know, you're never going back. And I think that's inc- an incredibly inspiring way to be. And I think that that kind of encompasses everything about the way this record sounds and the fact that the next one will probably sound different, you know, that you're not afraid to evolve and that you're also not afraid to put something out into the world before it's perfectly curated or, you know, um, you're not obsessed with uh, what I think can really handcuff a lot of artists and a lot of musicians, which is perfection, which I think is is often the death of progress. Right. So you're you're here as a testament to the fact that, hey, you can write in shapes and you can think and make split second decisions in the moment and find a way to trust yourself and the people that you pull in to know that it's going to be great and going to have that and to put it down and move on and not second guess it. And I think there is everything to be said about that. And if you want to know what that sounds like and you haven't already listened to My Shadow, <laughs> everybody should go do that. That's That goes without saying. You Like, that's um, what we're all about here because truly, I it's, it's incredible to hear you, to hear you say things like that after having listened to this record and feeling like so much of it makes sense. And there's such an inspirational idea behind not holding things too tightly and knowing that it's, that it's always going to evolve and just, and letting it continue to evolve and, and trust yourself. So, um, Quentin, dude, I want to thank, thank you for being with Tom and I on the show here. And I know I, I loved it. I'm going to go listen to the record again, probably going to get even more out of it. Um, 
but uh, I wish you the best with the album, the release. And yes, our paths will cross the next time you are either in Atlanta or Philly. Tom and I will be there. That is 100%. Um, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for having me, y'all. Had so much fun. We got to do the follow up, man. I'm telling you this, man. My shout out is out, man. Everybody who's listening to the pod right now, they already bumping the joint. It's already their favorite album. It's already a record of the summer. We're not worried about that. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to tell y'all is the next time, man, this next EP, though. The next EP, baby, we're doing a pod again, baby. We got to come back part two, man. It's going to be legendary, legendary time. Casey, Tom, legends. Thank you. I was bumping the Wonder Years right before this just to get hyped to pod. Just to get hyped to pod. So I'm, I thank y'all. Thank y'all. I'm excited for the next time, man. We're going to do it in live in person next time, man. It's going to be crazy. YouTube special Twitch event, man. I know a 3D studio, man. We're going to do this shit 3D, man. We're going to do this shit in the metaverse next time. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I'm going to send y'all the pics. 3D <laughs> Dude, studios yeah. where they shot the Mandalorian right here in downtown Brooklyn. I'm telling you, I got a guy. I got a guy. All right. All right. I will 100% take you up on that. You, Tom and I will be there. And listen, Quentin, if when, when this record does what, uh, what you already know and believe it's going to do for you, I hope you can make time for us to circle back and talk about the next one, dude. Uh, this was awesome. Be well. Man, we already have to be on the road, baby. You already know we hitting the road, baby. I ain't worried about that, man. We always got time for y'all, baby. You know what I mean? Showing love. Thank you so much. There is some serious wisdom and truth behind Quentin's philosophy that he just shared with us. Only forward, never backwards. Uh, he structures his entire process around being in the moment and avoiding overthinking at all costs, even going as far as making sure that the members of his band don't have enough time to overcompose or overconstruct their parts. This is incredible and it strips down the songs to their most basic form to make sure that they're capturing the emotion of that discovery process, right? That first take magic that I think can be lost a lot of times in an era where we have so many tools that can so quickly edit and slice and dice things to how we thought that they should have been or how we see them. He's going after something that's raw, that's real, and thus, I think, much more interesting than something that's overly contrived. So I think that's a really cool lesson to remember, and I'm so glad that uh, he joined us to share that with you. If you get a chance to listen to this record, I have no doubt you will feel that energy all throughout it. And it is an incredible reminder that a record is only as successful as the people and the process behind it. And with that, we thank you for joining us again this week and being part of our process. As always, if you dug this interview, please feel free to pass it along to a fellow musician, artist, or creative. It really makes a world of difference. You can also check out the show notes for other ways to get involved and support the show. And as always, we'll catch you next time on The Record Process.